The period we are living in is witnessing events of major significance revealed by our Prophet, peace be upon him, in the Hadith. The portents regarding the end times are all taking place one after another and just as they are described in the Hadith. As Islamic scholars all agree, this proves that the end times have begun. The term, the end times, refers to a period to occur shortly before the Day of Judgment. There are a great many reliable hadith recounted from the Prophet, peace be upon him, regarding the portents of the end times and the events that will take place during this time. Taken together, the signs in the Qur'an and the detailed descriptions in the Hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, provide important information regarding the end times. The events referred to as the portents of the end times are considered as major and minor portents. However, each of these portents is such of great importance that it cannot be separated from the others and also sheds light on the future of the Islamic world. In this film, we shall be seeing how each of these portents, described right down to the finest detail 1,400 years ago by the Prophet, peace be upon him, is truly a great miracle. Each of the portents of the end times is a great miracle. Those hadith referring to a specific place, time or individual, or providing information about one single and special event, such as a war or a natural event, are known as a major portent. Examples of these are such signs as the Iran-Iraq War, the lunar and solar eclipses observed during the month of Ramadan, and the shedding of blood in the Kaaba. General descriptions of the state of the world or of peoples living during the end times are known as minor portents. It appears from these minor portents that there will be an increasing number of earthquakes and tall buildings and that people will be carried over very long distances. These minor and major portents revealed by our Prophet, peace be upon him, in the Hadith must be evaluated in the most correct way. Because it is important that neither portents of a specific phenomenon nor other developments confirming these portents be ignored. The appropriate reflection and research shows that the way that portents thought of as minor are also coming true reveals that each one is in fact a very great miracle. The portents of the end times are one single whole. Occurring one after the other in the same period, they represent a single whole and point to one specific outcome. The Hadith provide detailed descriptions of the end times and each subject is set out in great detail. The fact that these portents were comprehensively set out 1400 years ago and are taking place one after the other in a specific period is a most miraculous state of affairs. While it is exceedingly difficult to predict what will happen in just a few decades time, the way that environmental, social, political and economic conditions were described in detail 1,400 years ago is only possible through revelation from Allah. Almighty Allah 
the Lord of all such mysterious knowledge, has also revealed in the Qur'an that he will impart as much of this knowledge about the unseen to his servants as he chooses. I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. He is the knower of the unseen and does not divulge his unseen to anyone except a messenger with whom he is well pleased. And then he posts sentinels before him and behind him. By Allah's leave, our Prophet, peace be upon him, imparted detailed information regarding an age that would come some 20 generations after his own day. If these portents, which we shall be discussing in the next part of this film, had taken place separately at very different times, they might have been thought of as just ordinary events. But the facts that so many portents have taken place one after the other over a very short space of time confirms the importance of the time we are living in and the veracity of the Hadith. It is absolutely certain that these Hadith are telling us the truth and they were actually spoken by our Prophet. Because although very different Hadith have come down to us through very different channels, they are still all in agreement with one another and all represent a single whole. And this eliminates any doubt as to the truth of the sources of these words. The fact that the events pointed to in the Hadith are taking place all at the same time constitutes the most powerful evidence confirming the truth of these accounts. This criterion has been used by many Islamic scholars who researched the end times and the portents of the Day of Judgment. Biruizaman Sa'id Nursi, the famous Islamic scholar of the century before ours, stated that the taking place of much of what was imparted in the Hadith in our own age confirmed the truth of the Hadith. Could you accurately predict what will happen in 1400 years time? As we have seen, all the hadith that have come down to the present day and that refer to the end times are of the very greatest importance. The portents revealed in these hadith need to be considered as a single whole. Reflecting on the answers to a few questions will make this clearer. For instance, could you accurately predict the main lines of what the world will be like in 100 years time? Let us imagine that you are living at the beginning of the 1900s. If you were asked, could you accurately foresee the significant events that would take place in our own day? What people's moral situation would be, the level of earthquakes, or whether there would be any wars between specific countries? Of course not. Or imagine that you are living in the 7th century AD, when it took many days to travel from one city to another, when communications were very difficult and slow, and when buildings could only be constructed a few stories in height because of technical limitations. Now let us assume that you are asked to predict what the prevailing conditions will be in 1,400 years time. What could you possibly say? Would such technological advances unique to the present day, including means of transport such as cars and planes, skyscrapers 100 to 150 stories high, mobile phones, or radio and television even cross your mind? Or can you predict today what kind of buildings will be constructed in 1400 years time, around the year 3400? Or can you say what society will be like in moral terms, or whether there will be severe famine or disease? As we have seen, it is just about impossible to estimate what kind of developments there will be in just one area, let alone the whole picture in 1400, or 140, or even just 14 years time. 
Therefore, if you were told things that would take place, just as described in the three thousands, could these ever be regarded as insignificant? The answer to all these questions is obviously no. All these facts show that each one of the phenomena referred to 1400 years ago in the Hadith that described developments in various spheres related to the end times is a truly great miracle. All the portents of the end times refer to our own day and age. Hundreds of hadith containing information about the end times all, without exception, refer to our own day and age. The conclusion reached when one considers them all as a whole is this. The fact that all the hadith referring to the end times have come true, despite the large numbers involved and in exactly the same way as foretold hundreds of years ago, and with no contradiction or inconsistency between them, is a very great miracle. In addition, these hadith have been known for a very long time. They appear in the most reliable Islamic reference sources and can be read by anyone who wants. The interpretation of many hadith that people who lived before us were unable to understand has been clarified through the emergence of many events today indicated in the hadith. The appearance of portents revealed 14 centuries ago is a great phenomenon that further increases believers' faith in and the devotion to Allah. It is of course no coincidence that so many signs should be all taking place together in a very short time frame. These portents are all very welcome tidings for those who believe in Allah. These developments are heralds of a time when plenty, abundance, and justice replace the many troubles experienced during the first part of the end times, and when immorality and degeneration will disappear completely. This period is a holy one, longed for by believers for hundreds of years in which the coming of the blessed Mahdi salam, and the return to earth of the prophet Jesus salam, the moral values of Islam will reign supreme. For that reason every portent taking place in the end times is a most joyous and welcomed one for believers, showing that this holy age is near at hand. Earthquakes will multiply. The increasingly frequent earthquakes in our day have terrified human beings for many hundreds of years. Even 20th and 21st century technology has only partly been able to prevent the damage caused by earthquakes. According to the American National Earthquake Information Center, there were 20,832 earthquakes of all sizes, great and small, in 1999. According to the official statements, 22,711 people are estimated to have lost their lives in these quakes. According to Kandili Observatory data, the number of earthquakes in Turkey as a whole rose by 75% from 2002 through 2005. Figures for the last three years show 3,268 earthquakes with a severity greater than 2 on the Richter scale in 2002, rising to 3,925 in 2003 and 5,331 in 2004. This all reminds us of the words of the Prophet, peace be upon him, spoken 
1,400 years ago. There will be earthquakes among my community, such that 10,000, 20,000, or 30,000 people will perish in these earthquakes. The Day of Judgment will not take place until these events are realized. Earthquakes will multiply. The large numbers and frequency of earthquakes in recent years and their severity on the Richter scale are regarded as major and highly significant changes by seismologists. Because the number of earthquakes in the recent past was very low. According to US Geological Research Organization reports, out of the earthquakes carried out in some 400 years between 1556 and 1975, only 110 registered 5 or above on the Richter scale. According to the same institution, there were 1,685 earthquakes registering 6.5 on the Richter scale in the 23 years between 1980 and 2003. There can be no doubt that these statistics reveal a huge increase in the number of earthquakes since the beginning of the year 1400 according to the Hijri calendar 1979 to 1980 according to the Gregorian calendar. This shows us one of our prophets, peace be upon him, great miracles. Because the hadith telling us of such a huge increase in the number of earthquakes were first spoken some 1,400 years ago, bearing in mind the conditions of those times, there were no technological means to make any such prediction on the subject possible. It is only by way of contemporary technology that we have been able to learn of such geological phenomena as the movements of the Earth's crust and cracks in tectonic fault lines. In conclusion, therefore, in the Hadith, our Prophet, peace be upon him, describes events that were to take place 1,400 years later in such detail as if he had actually witnessed them with his own eyes. The way that every event described has successively taken place just as described in our own time is a proof that each and every one is, without exception, a major portent of the end times. Earthquakes are just one of the many portents mentioned in the Hadith. Allah knows the truth, of course. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, was given as much knowledge of the future as our Lord wished to reveal to him. It is clear from the information that has come down to us through the Hadith that the period referred to in them is no ordinary time. The hadith of our Prophet, peace be upon him, indicate through revelation by Allah a special and specific time when many astonishing events will follow one another. This age, unique in all of history, is the end times. The construction of tall buildings.
The construction of multi-story buildings only began towards the end of the 19th century. Technological advances, the spread of steel, and the use of electric lifts accelerated the building of skyscrapers. Skyscrapers have become an important component of the 20th and 21st century architecture, and some have literally become status symbols in the present day. Some of the world's tallest skyscrapers and their heights are CNN Television Tower in Canada, 555 meters. The Taipei 101 building in Taiwan, 508 meters. The Oriental Pearl Television Tower in China, 467 meters. The Petronas Towers in Malaysia, 449 meters. Sears Tower in Chicago, 443 meters. The Empire State Building in New York, 381 meters. People living 1,400 years ago were unquestionably unaware of the technological means making the construction of such tall buildings possible. Moreover, they could never have guessed the towers 100 to 150 stories high would one day be built. These words spoken at a time when houses were no more than one or two stories high, when such fundamental construction materials as cement and steel had not yet been manufactured, and when there were no machines such as lorries or cranes to facilitate construction, are just one of the great proofs of the end times. The Day of Judgment will not happen until these signs take place. People will compete with one another to construct tall buildings. The Rising Up of Buildings These hadith make it clear that the age we are living in is that of the end times. Allah knows the truth of this. It is a great miracle how this portent set out in the Hadith 1400 years ago should have taken place in our age, together with other portents that could have come about at any time. These portents are also just one of the proofs that the end times described by our Prophet, peace be upon him, have begun. Contraction of time. The day of judgment will not happen until these signs take place. Time will contract and vehicles will shorten distances. Modern day supersonic planes, trains and other advanced means of transport make it possible to complete journeys that would once have taken months in a matter of just a few hours and what is more, in a safer and more comfortable way. That is just what the Hadith is suggesting.
In another hadith, our Prophet, peace be upon him, has provided the following information about the contraction of time. The Blessed Enes, radiallahu anhu, relates, The Messenger of Allah said, The Day of Judgment will not happen until time contracts. This will take place in such a way that a year will be like a month, a month like a week, a week like a day, a day like an hour, and an hour like the blink of an eye. As can be seen from these hadith, the end times will see a huge gain in time compared to the past. Indeed, communications between continents that used to take weeks is now through the internet and advanced technology completed in a matter of seconds. We can now obtain goods that used to arrive after journeys lasting for months within a very short space of time. Millions of books can be printed in the time it used to take to produce not many, just one. In addition to these, and with the assistance of technological products, daily tasks such as cleaning, cooking, and childminding now take very little time at all. In short, this portent has today come about just as described by our Prophet, peace be upon him. A Rise in Urbanization O oh, Enos, people will dwell in cities, some of which will be called Basra and Kusair. With the Industrial Revolution, the results of which particularly began revealing themselves as of the second half of the 19th century, people began leaving rural areas and settling in cities. The urban population has been rising every year since. Research shows that by the year 2020 in Turkey alone, the urban population will represent 80% of the country's total population. This state of affairs has arisen as a portent of the end times, just as revealed in the Hadith. Allah knows the truth. The Proximity of Markets The Day of Judgment will not happen until markets draw close. Shopping opportunities today are incomparably greater than those that existed in the past. There are shopping centers, shops and markets at which just about everyone can find all their needs without having to travel far from home. These have now reached small towns and villages. On the other hand, by reason of the speed of means of transportation, people are also able to go and shop in places that would once have been impossible to reach. Shopping over the internet is also growing rapidly.
One can shop from home and buy goods from wherever in the world one wishes. Look that in these terms, and as revealed in the hadith of our Prophet, peace be upon him, markets have indeed become so close as to effectively have entered inside people's homes. Allah knows the truth. The Greening of the Deserts The Day of Judgment will not happen until there are rivers and gardens in Arabia. One of the technological advances indicating the abundance of goods that will take place during the end times is the greening of the deserts. Bearing in mind that 43% of the Earth's landmass is desert, it is obvious how important this subject is for agricultural technology. Crops can now be produced from even the most arid lands as water is brought in to irrigate infertile desert soil. If this advanced technology is applied to all deserts, then many countries on the brink of starvation will come into possession of large tracts of productive agricultural land. Advanced technology is of course essential for this to happen. In order for agriculture in desert regions to be possible and for arid lands to be cultivated, the problem of irrigation has to be resolved. One of the technologies currently being investigated is that of computer-controlled irrigation. Using this technology, water is directed directly towards the crop roots, and thus not a single drop is wasted. The purification and use of all kinds of water is also of the greatest importance in desert agriculture. For that reason, the rapid use of flood and seawater represents the basis of agricultural technology. This will represent an enormous water resource and provide enormous support for national economies. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, also refers to the efficient use of water in the Hadith. The good and bad in my community will enjoy many blessings, the like of which have never been seen before. Although much rain will fall, not a single drop will be wasted, and the land will be productive and fertile without demanding a single seed. Longer life expectancy. Lifespans will be much longer in his time. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, made this declaration 14 centuries ago. Records reveal that average lifespans today are far, far greater than those at any other time in the past. There is even a great difference between life expectancies at the beginning and at the end of the 20th century. For example, it has been estimated that a child born in 1995 will live an average of 35 years longer than one born in the early 1900s.
Another striking example in this area is the way that although very few people used to live to be 100, there is now a large increase in the number of people doing so. This increase in life expectancy is, of course, no coincidence. Advances in health provision themselves linked to medical advances have made it possible for people to enjoy these blessings. In addition, progress in genetics and human genome project, which is still making giant strides, are about to usher in a new dawn in the field of health. On the basis of all these advances, we can now say that people today have now obtained the long lives and standards of health referred to in the hadith just cited. Product Growth People will obtain 700 measures of wheat for every measure they sow. A man will sow a few handfuls of wheat and reap 700. Although there will be much rain, not a single drop will be wasted. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, has also imparted a great deal of information in the Hadith on the subject of the technological progress in the end times. The Hadith describes the increase in goods that will take place in the end times as a result of this progress. Many modern technologies are employed in order to make it possible to enjoy many more products than were available in the past. Some of these are the move to modern forms of agriculture, the development of new production techniques, seed improvement, and new dams and artificial lakes making it possible to take advantage of rainwater. On account of these technologies, which are making new strides every day, there is a huge increase in both the quality and quantity of products available. A huge revolution is taking place in agricultural technology as well as some other fields of technology and with the rapid genetic advances being made in particular. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, miraculously revealed this important progress in the field of agriculture back in the 7th century when none of these technologies even existed and when there was no way of knowing that they would even be possible in the future. A turning away from moral virtues. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, preached the moral virtue of Islam, the true faith, and advised people not to abandon the path indicated by the Holy Quran, revealed as a guide to mankind by Almighty Allah. Allah assisted and supported the Prophet, peace be upon him, who devoted his life to fully discharging this duty and bestowed success upon him. As a result, Islam quickly spread to far distant lands and enjoyed enormous public interest and support everywhere it was preached. The moral values brought with it by the Qur'an, such as peace, justice, brotherhood, solidarity, loyalty, love, affection, and honesty, soon spread and came to enjoy pride of place among individuals and nations.
there was a rapid and widespread move towards proper moral values. The way that, at a time when Islam and the moral virtues of the Qur'an were spreading and enjoying wide acceptance, our Prophet, peace be upon him, referred to a very different climate existing in the future, is a truly miraculous state of affairs. There will come a time when only the image of the Holy Qur'an and only the name of Islam remain. Although they are the furthest removed from Islam, people will be known as Muslims, and their places of worship will be mere ruins on the road to salvation, though they will appear most attractive. There will come a time when people have human faces, but the hearts of Satan. They will shed blood and not refrain from ugly behavior. If you join them, they will spy on you. If you trust them, they will betray you. Their children are immoral, and their young people unrestrained. Their elders do not command the good and embarrass the bad. They regard the sunnah as corruption, and corruption as sunnah. One of the inevitable consequences of turning away from the moral values of the faith is social degeneration. Social collapse manifests itself in a number of different ways. Fragmented families, high divorce rates, and cohabitation are the natural results of damage to the institution of the family. This is how our Prophet, peace be upon him, who lived 14 centuries ago, described this picture. When there is separation and social instability among people, the growth of divorce is one of the portents of the Day of Judgment. The severing of ties with relatives and bad neighborliness are some of the portents of the Day of Judgment. One of the most striking signs of social disintegration is the huge rise in crime. This has reached enormous levels in our day. The Global Report on Crime and Justice, issued by the United Nations Office for Drug Control and Crime Prevention, makes the following generalizations regarding the nations of the world. In general, crime levels will continue to rise as they did in the 1980s and 1990s. All over the world, over a five-year period, two-thirds of inhabitants of large cities are at least once suffered criminal activities. The possibilities of being a sufferer of a serious crime in the world as a whole is one in five. Crimes of violence and crimes against property by young people irrespective of region, are all correlated with economic problems. There has been an enormous rise in the varieties and quality of illegal narcotics. Social degeneration and all the problems that associate it with it are the inevitable results of people forgetting Allah and the reason for their creation and their turning their backs on the true faith and moral values. The perverted philosophies and ideological movements that emerged from the 19th century onwards played a considerable role in this degeneration spreading much further and attaining a much higher level than ever in the past. Darwinism, materialism, communism, Satanism and New Age beliefs are just a few of these twisted trends and movements. The abandonment of religious moral values and social degeneration has now reached a peak compared with the past. Perversions, crime, violence, and immorality are now widespread all over the world. The way that our Prophet, peace be upon him, described today's prevailing climate with its social and moral aspects in great detail 1,400 years ago is another of his great miracles.
conclusion. Similar moral climates to that we are experiencing today is described in detail in the hadith of our Prophet peace be upon him may also have arisen at other times on a small scale and confined to local regions over the intervening 1400 years. But the important thing here is that all the portents of the end times revealed in the hadith are today taking place all over the world at the same time one after the other in such a way as to fully complement one another. Therefore, an accurate analysis of the events taking place in our time will help us see how the present age has a very different place and significance compared to the preceding 14 centuries. On the other hand, the fact that the Hadith provides such detailed descriptions and that these descriptions fully correspond to what is happening today once again reminds us of a very important truth. Every description of the end times given in the Hadith by our Prophet peace be upon him is a major important calling for the greatest reflection. The way that by Allah's leave our Prophet peace be upon him described every portent taking place today in complete detail is one of his greatest miracles. <laughs>